When Ivy King moved from South America to Brooklyn, New York, she worked hard to realize her dream of buying a house big enough for her large family to live in together. Fifteen years later, on the evening of June 11, 1994, she was still living in her dream house with a grown son, four grown daughters, and their families, including 28-year-old Carmel. This has been my home for years. You get attached. It's a part of you. That's like your comfort zone. This would be enough for now. How many potatoes do you want in there? Like three. Ivy was in the kitchen on the first floor. I saw the smoke start gushing from the bedroom. And I just shout, and I say, fire, fire, fire. fire. Oh, the smoke was black. I mean, black smoke just gushing out of the room, so I knew it was serious. Diane, she was the favorite in the family. She was born mentally retarded. She would take care of the kids. The kids love her. I picked up the phone, and I dialed 911. Police operator 2338, where's your emergency? No, Ella, no, Ella, there's a fire downstairs. Fire? Yes, come on, I tell you, I come on, fire downstairs. Okay. Diane was standing in front of my bedroom door, and I said to her, go outside. No, Ella, come on, no, come on, no, come on. Between the time we realized the fire started, and by the time we got out of the house, the whole house was just on fire. 16-year-old Noella is one of the oldest of Ivy's grandchildren. I thought everybody was outside. But then we started looking around. That's when we realized that Diane was missing. She wasn't outside, so she had to be in the house. And I thought, oh my God, she's going to die. Because at that point, the fire had consumed the whole house. I felt guilty. I felt that I should have made sure that she came out of the house. Within four minutes of the call, the first New York City fire units arrived, including 11-year veteran Richard Palmer. A woman let us know that somebody was in back trapped in the parlor floor. I didn't have many options as to how to get to the building, but I had to go through another building to get there. 35 Victor, I have a major bond for you. St. Mary's Hospital Ambulance Paramedic Denise King was also dispatched to the scene. We got a call for a burn. They didn't give us the location. They just said Eastern Parkway in New York Avenue. I told my partner, I said, oh, that's where my family lived. There was a side door. I had to force it with the Halligan tool. Zero visibility, pretty hot. Most of the parlor floor was involved in fire. It was just so much smoke and fire through the whole house. I didn't think it was possible for her to survive all that. 99% of the times you crawl around a fire, you see nothing. You go 100% by touch. The most important part is to keep a mental track of where you are in the room in regard to getting out. When I entered the kitchen area, the fire was very close. Actually, it was probably starting to come into the kitchen itself. I started going towards the rear, towards where the window I had broken, and probably 10 or 12 feet back, I found Miss King. The job came up on the computer. Yeah, it came up. It's 295 New York Avenue. Oh, God, that's my family house. And I said, that's my mom's house. I got very nervous at that point. I couldn't go back, bring her out the way I had come in. There was a fence involved and too many stairs. 132-0280. I couldn't really determine if she was breathing. I checked for her pulse. She had a pulse. The fire 
car had pretty much been knocked down by the engine. We took her up and back out through the fire building. It didn't even appear as though she was breathing, so I just knew she was dead. New York City police officer Marty Polino was also on the scene. The mother was hysterical crying. We were like trying to hold everybody back, trying to make room for EMS to respond. Denise's partner, paramedic MD David Colborn, had worked with her for four years. Denise is very cool, very collected. She's a very good paramedic. Very much so in control of herself, usually. I saw my sister on the sidewalk. Oh my God, I can't do this. Oh no. I said, you know, Denise, we need you now. You know, your sister needs you. I remember saying, okay, and I wasn't nervous anymore. I was just handling the call like, you know, I would normally handle a call. Okay. It was still my sister, but this is my job. I'm going to do my job and do the best I can. Daddy's. I don't think I could have done it. She was very brave. Her respirations were suppressed. She was covering thought. Her hair was burned. As we get her to the ambulance, her respiratory rate ceased. Was she breathing at all when you got there? She was very combative. We restrained her and we attempted the intubation, but she pulled the tube out and we just continued to bag. It was very hard being calm, very hard. I was spraying the whole time. Okay. Diane was taken to the trauma center at Kings County Hospital, where emergency physician Richard Sinner took over her care. When she arrived, she was quite disoriented, but her vital signs were stable, and she was breathing at a normal rate. Can I speak to the director of the hyperbaric chamber at Bronx? We did tests, and it showed that she had a significant carbon monoxide poisoning. We needed to affect the uh, treatment rather quickly. Diane was transferred to Bronx Municipal Hospital, where she was put in a hyperbaric chamber to lower the dangerous levels of carbon monoxide in her blood. Okay, 60 feet, you're on bottom. She was hospitalized for seven weeks. Five months later, 30-year-old Diane King is doing well. The family lost everything they owned, but not their strength to continue. I think they have a hard road ahead of them. But I think that because of the natural dynamics that they have and the love that they have for each other, they'll be able to do very well in the future, even though this minor setback is taking place for them. It was subsequently determined that the fire was caused by a short in the electrical wiring. The house and the stuff in the house is material. We could always replace that. So the best part was that Diane turned out okay and everybody was alive.